In the Gospel of John, the Christ speaks the following, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So who is the Comforter, who will teach us all things? Maybe you don't believe the Bible, or that the Father kept his word. Rudolf Steiner taught his students all things, including the answers to the mysteries of the world, like the Great Pyramids and ancient Atlantis, as examples. There is no other person in modern history whose work and literature can compare to Steiner's in volume or quality. I'll use the topic Akashic, Akashic Records as an example. Helena Blavatsky's organization was the Theof Theosophical Society, and she mentioned the Akashic Records once in her literature. Rudolf Steiner was the foremost teacher in the Theosophical Society, not Blavatsky, and Steiner has entire books explaining the Akashic Records. Rosie Crucian is German for Rose Christian. Rudolf Steiner is by far the foremost authority and teacher of Rosicrucianism. So we're going to take a look at this organization right here. I'm going to show you guys. Here's an organization that calls itself the Rosicrucian Fellowship, located in Oceanside, California. I looked closer at the Rosicrucian Fellowship after I found out they forbid even the mention of Steiner on their property. And I'm going to pull something up and share it with you guys. Rudolf Steiner on Plagiarism, the story of Max Heindel. Max Heindel was the founder of the Rosicrucian Fellowship. There must be more virility of judgment. We must face the facts that in our society, things happen that could only happen there and nowhere else. I am going to speak of an occurrence that happened some time ago now, but I will mention a recent one as well. A certain her Grashoff became a member of our society. For a time, he attended lectures in every town where they were given. He was always there. Naturally, you may ask, why was he admitted to membership? In certain circumstances, it is impossible to refuse admittance to people, especially if they are introduced by trusted persons. It would be a question of foreseeing the future. Suppose a man like Grashoff were to come and I were to say, we cannot admit him. Well, why not? Oh, because later on he will be a traitor to the society. One cannot adopt this attitude about something that has not happened yet, but will only happen in the future. Such people quite obviously must be admitted to the society. This man Grashoff attended every lecture that he possibly could. He borrowed notes made by the members and copied them all, and what people were unwilling to give him, he extracted through the intermediary of the person who had introduced him. Then, after a time, he returned to America, whence he had come, and wrote a book, compiled from everything he had heard in the lectures and found in the books and had also amassed from unpublished lectures. But he made no mention of this. He wrote a preface to this book in which he said, I heard this and that from Dr. Steiner, but felt that I was not ready for it. Then I was ordered to go to a master, a master in the Transylvania Alps, of course, and from this master I learned the deeper truths that I still lacked.
the deeper and higher in th this book is copied down from my lectures and books and from notes made by other members. The book was published in America under the title of Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception, and even that was a plagiary. Some people might have said, well, after all, that is America, I'm sorry, that is American, and perhaps one can expect nothing else. But here in Germany, there was a publishing company managed by a doctor, Hugo Walrath. He was quite eager to translate the book into German, and he did so, bringing it out as a series of letters of instruction. His preface stated that some of the contents had, it was true, first been given in Germany, but had had to mature in the pure air of California. <laughs> in the literary world proper, such scandalous procedure is unthinkable. It is a scandal which ought everywhere to have been recognized as such, and it would have been had there been any soundness of judgment. I would really like to count the names of the people who knew the facts. Few take any interest in such matters, however, and so they recur. Then there was a man who had been a member for many years. Membership could no more be refused to him than it could be refused to her Grashoff, who wrote his book in America under the name of Max Heindel. This other man, Max Selling, wrote in a book titled, Who Was Christ? In this book, although not to the same extent as Grashoff, he compiled all kinds of things taken from my lecture courses, with the motto that knowledge should not be withheld, but belongs to the world. The person from whom he had copied the motto was very angry because its original author had used it in quite different context. And then her selling added, Dr. Steiner has, it is true, indicated certain details, but everything needs to be developed. You can understand, my friends, that this book had to be rejected by the Anthroposophical Publishing Company in Berlin, to whom selling applied with the request that they should publish it. He thereupon became an opponent. Rudolf Steiner received the following letter at the time. Dear sir, may I venture to approach you with a question, or indeed with more than one question? I must mention, first of all, that I am here on a short visit and that my home is in Salina, Kansas, USA. In that town, some time ago, two friends and I procured a book that had been recommended to us by the Esoteric Library in Washington, D.C. The title of the book is Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception or Christian Occult Science by Max Heindel. We were struck by the curious way in which the preface, Max Heindel, refers to the name of Dr. Steiner, the main lines of whose teachings are said to resemble his, etc., etc. In short, the preface caused me and subsequently my friends to read your books, Initiation and Its Results and Theosophy. It is a riddle to us why whole sentences in the Cosmo Conception can be compared almost word for word with those contained in your books. So the thought occurred to us as Max Heindel borrowed from you the teachings he is trying to spread in America, above all in California? Question mark. And the answer to that is clear. Uh, obviously, yes. Um, Max Heindel committed plagiarism. Wikipedia is saying Steiner was influenced by Heindel when the opposite is true. But then again, Wikipedia says Steiner was influenced by the Waldorf schools he founded. And 
And let me see what's next. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to look at the Illuminati real quick. Check this out right here. And a look at the Illuminati created by Adam Weishop. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correct. Adam Weishop. Adam Weishop wasn't an initiate in the true sense of the term. He wasn't on a path of spiritual development at all. And he wasn't illuminated. He liked to read, and after reading esoteric material that belonged to his uncle, he decided to create an organization. His organization was a failure, so he joined Freemasonry for the wrong reasons. He didn't understand Freemasonry, and he didn't fit in. He never made it past the Entered Apprentice degree, which is the first degree, before he quit or was kicked out. Having failed in Freemasonry, he would later refer to his organization as a Lodge of Perfection, although he never perfected anything. In previous videos, I talked about how there's two Illuminatis, one fake and one real. Adam Weishaupt's is the fake Illuminati. In spiritual science, development in Christ illuminates us, and those illuminated in Christ make up the true Illuminati.